Hello and welcome back to Farmer's Wife Homestead. Today we are doing freezer meals. I've been wanting to do freezer meals for ages. Um, I've done freezer meals over the years um, and I've got a couple in the freezer but I really need to stock up on some more. We've just had a beast done so it's the perfect time to do um, beef freeze meals which is what we're going to do today bar one recipe and um, we process the the meat ourselves um, I minced it down husband cut it up and um, so it's all just fresh at the moment and I need to get it in the freezer now so we are going to start with um, a lasagna uh, lasagna lasagna a couple of meat loaves I'm not going to cook them they're going to be raw um, and I'll probably cook up one for tonight's dinner um, two lots of meatballs, two lots of spag bowl, two lots of nacho mince, a pasta bake and I thought I might do a mac and cheese because I'm already going to be making a cheese sauce. So to me that made, made sense. Uh, I'll have to see if I've got any um, mac and cheese noodles though. Um, yeah, so we're going to go with that and see how we go. I can't remember how much beef mince I ended up pulling out but um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So that would be one... Uh, 5, 9, 10, 11, 11 freezer meals. So, yeah. And um, my aim is to uh, do it all in the, in the afternoon. In the, this afternoon. I'll have to have a look at, see what the time is. Okay, so it's 12.38. And um, I'm going to show you that you can do it in an afternoon and, and, and in a few hours. And not um, have to spend an entire day or a weekend doing it. So the first thing you're going to do is get everything sort of laid out and ready. Um, so I'll just show you. So I've got my little list of recipes. I've got some veg veggies there. My bowls are set out. Um, the chopping board's there. The dishwasher's empty. I've got some ingredients over on this side. And of course I've got all my herbs and spices up here. So they're at the ready anyway. Uh, I like to have a nice clean kitchen, empty rubbish bin. Um, and the thing with this, well, I'm going to, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to show you, right, I'm going to get all the, no, I might start chopping up, I'm going to grate a whole heap of carrot, and I'm going to dice some onion, so we'll do that first. Basically got to work out, um, how, how much onion you need per recipe, and then just dice, dice or slice them up as per what you need, um. Whenever I do big catering things or um, family events, I've catered a couple of my daughter's weddings. Um, I've got me a fine art of preparing the day before and, and pre-prepping food. Um, I do it at Christmas as well. And in fact, I do have a video for last Christmas. It's a three-course meal video. Um, and... I kind of go through it a lot more how I do it, how I pre prep. But um, the key is just getting everything ready and it'll go a lot faster. Um, I've also chosen um, meals that sort of go well together cut down on the time. Of course the other way you could do it is by um, cooking twice as much as you need on any given night and that way you are basically doubling and then freezing one. That's another popular way to do it. Let me know in the comments if um, you do freezer meals and if you do, how often do you do them? And if you don't, is it something that you would like to do but just haven't got around to it, it's too hard or what, what's, what's your reasoning? Let me know, I'd be very interested to know. Of course I could save all these for stock and whatnot but just going to make it easy on myself today and all this is going to the piggies.
whatever we don't use, I will freeze. I'm just gonna throw them around the place. And definitely clean as you go. Now I'll do some cheese. And the key is just keep tidying up, tidying up, tidying up in between because that way um, things can be a lot more organised. So I've just just got every, everything chopped and um, grated that I'm going to need aside from some um, uh, spinach I'll probably put some spinach in um, the lasagna so now I'm just going to get the meat out and we're going to start dividing it up right I have six kilos of mince so um, I need to leave some out for fresh making so we need one lot for uh, the meatballs and then the lasagna we want uh, half half um, 500 grams for lasagna the other 500 for the pasta bake and then we want a couple of spag bowls and then a meatloaf so we can actually make up quite a lot of the um, the red sauce well, what I call red sauce um, so we're going to make up one big batch of tomato based um, sauce with the mince with um, similar herbs and spices and then make different meals from that so yeah so we need one one kilo for the meatloaf because I've got sausage meat as well and meatballs. I might actually even do one and a half meatballs. So let's just put some in here. One and a half. I'm going to do the meatballs first and then we'll leave that aside and then we'll do three kilos in the red sauce. I'm just going to grab three and a half kilos. I'm just going to grab a big pot and get that on the stove. Mm. Get this cooking and then while this is cooking we can make the stuff that's fresh. two pots. Now I'm going to open up these big tins of tomatoes as well. We'll start with one big tin. It's uh, two and a half kilos. And I need to do more tomato paste. Just browning this meat. And to this I'm going to add, um, to both of them I'm going to add some onion. Right. Lovely 
garlic. So good, this stuff. Have it all ready. Lots of garlic. And actually, while I'm at it, I'll put it in, leave some out for the other recipes as well. Out of these two pots, we are going to make the lasagna, the pasta bake, the nacho mints, the spaghetti bolognese. And I'm making the nacho mints last because then I can add all the nacho type flavorings. We don't have the big roaster um, oven things like you guys have in America, um, you know, we've got crock pots and and, and uh, pressure cookers, but no big huge um, roaster pans like you guys have. No. Um, tea towel, hook it around your apron, that way you can dry your hands um, really quickly and anything that you need it for. This is the meatball mix. Let's try and break up that garlic. Okay, so to this we want half what's left of the Carrot. Um, we don't want that quite that many. And then I'm just going to grab some seasoning. Salt, pepper, thyme, basil, garlic, herbs. I'm going to use a little bit of thyme. basil because it will have a tomato based sauce, some oregano, and a little bit more mixed herbs. I should have just left all the tops off because I'm going to use them again. Lots of black pepper. teaspoon of salt, that's a kilo and a half. Some Worcester sauce. I'm just going to give um, the mince a stir. I'm just going to add the same seasonings to these two as well. It's a little bit of thyme in both. Gano. and these are all seasonings that will go into nacho mince anyway so that's all Needs quite a bit of salt, so I'm doing that amount one and a half teaspoons per recipe. I'll start with that anyway. This is starting to brown quite nicely, almost ready for the tomatoes. Okay, now back to this, we're just going to smoosh it all together. Okay, and to this we're going to add an egg and some breadcrumbs. You don't have to add an egg if you're an egg-free family. A 
but it does help to bind. divide that roughly in half. Wash my hands again. Now we're just going to roll little meatballs. I'm not going to cook these, we're just going to freeze them raw. And then all I have to do is pull them out of the freezer and I can chuck some marinara sauce over the top, cook up some spaghetti, bam. Right, these are ready for the tomato. Oh, that made a mess. Roughly half an inch. Some water to swirl it out. Missed clean up now. Plenty of tomato paste. Those that know me know when you cook with tomatoes. Yes, sir. Balsamic vinegar. And brown sugar to counteract. About a quarter of a cup. I've already put some water in, but I'll just put a little bit more. Right. Now these flavours will intensify the longer I cook them. Put these down for a little while. Make sure you break up any clumps of mince while you're at it. You could add zucchini, you could add whatever veg else veg you want to this, but this is mostly concentrating on the um, the meat portion of the freezer meals, the sides I'll just make up on the day. Arm's getting a workout. It's good you start out small and then you get bored with it and then <laughs> your meatballs end up being bigger. paper over the top just to protect them a little bit more and then I'm going to cover with um, tin foil. So that's two done. Now I've got the other kilo of beef mince. I'm going to grab some sausage meat and we'll make up the meat loaves. Um, 
um, I'm just going to turn, get these a stir and turn them down a little bit and simmer for a, for a while until we need them. They turned right down. I'll show you what they look like. Beautiful, rich red colour. So the meatloaf, I'm going to pretty much put the same flavourings as the um, meatballs. So we're going to grab some onions, last of the carrot. Probably about two grated carrots, some breadcrumbs, an egg, some mixed herbs, a little bit more basil, a little bit more oregano. I like to add a splodge of tomato sauce or tomato ketchup. Worcestershire sauce. Lots of that. And uh, garlic's already in there so we need salt and pepper. teaspoon and a half of salt to the one kilo of mince we want half a kilo of sausage meat I couldn't buy any rolls of sausage meat so I'm just going to squeeze them out of the skins This is um, pork sausage. And with the other half of the sausages, I thought I might show you my famous sausage roll recipe. That I used to sell in my cafe and they were hugely popular. Okay, so we're just going to hand mix this um, meatloaf and form them into two loaves. And as I said, I'm going to leave one out for tonight's dinner and one will go in the freezer uncooked. Thoroughly mix it so you don't want chunks of sausage and then chunks of mince. You want it all combined really well. And then on the top, I just in the last two minutes of cooking, I put tomato, ah, sorry, barbecue sauce. That's another recipe I'm wanting to. Start making myself as barbecue sauce. Oh, that's good, that's coming together nicely now. Everything's starting to get sticky. And all these meals, um, uh, well, it depends how many kids we've got at home at the time, but it feeds three to four with leftovers. So, definitely a family of five. I don't normally use these pans, but I'm going to today. For 
ease of um, cleaning up. Now that will be the freezer one. This will be tonight's one because I know that we've definitely got more for dinner. This is the one for the freezer. I'm just going to put a layer of paper around it just to protect it a bit more. So I'm just grabbing a big pot of water and I'm going to put some pasta in. We also need to make up a cheese sauce. So that's all for the um, lasagna and the mac and cheese. If I've got any pasta left for mac, um, macaroni type noodles, it doesn't even have to be macaroni. Anything doesn't, doesn't bother us. So again, another tidy up. that much onion left over I'll cook up some bacon um, and put that in the mac and cheese as well and the two pots of red sauce there that's the meat sauce so that's going to be the lasagna spag bowl, nacho mince and the pasta bake. Alright, so on to making some cheese sauce and going and finding some more pasta. I wonder what the time is, I'll check the time. So I've done all that in an hour so far and I did no prep work beforehand and we're not far from finished so yeah, it goes to prove if you make one sort of sauce and then do a few different meals makes it a lot easier. Right, I'm going to have a quick drink bake and find some pasta. There, some whole wheat pasta. We'll just use that. So yeah that's what I need to cook up now. Some butter. It's going to make quite a bit of um, cheese sauce. Roughly equal, equal parts flour, make a roux and cook out the butter. These are going to be so great to have for the days that I don't feel like cooking I can just pull something out. Or I've had a full a full day of filming for you guys. Right, now as you know I use water because I use milk powder. Let's start with two cups. Three cups of water and I don't know, just put in about six of those. Some chicken stock powder. Next level cheese sauce with that stuff. Some pepper. You can put mustard in if you want mustard in it, but I'm just going to keep it relatively plain. 
and let this thicken up now. I like a very, very thick sauce. Just going to add some cheese to it. When you put something like chicken stock powder or vegetable stock powder in your cheese sauce, it gives more flavour so therefore you can cut down on some of the cheese, making it cheaper. Assemble the lasagna and put some meat sauce down the bottom. Right, you'll notice, um, just use any lasagna sheets you've got. You do not have to cook your lasagna sheets before. It doesn't matter if it says no pre-cooking, just any lasagna sheets. Oh, look at this, it's going to be perfect size. Because they will cook in the fluid that you've got. Not fluid, fluid's not a good word, in the meat sauce. As long as your meat sauce is, you know, it's got some, um, not runniness, you don't want runny, um, moist. You don't want a dry meat sauce. And I don't know about you, but I like to get as many layers as possible. And I can't be bothered going out to the garden for the spinach. No ricotta. This is how I've always done it. Ideally, actually, I would make this cheese sauce a bit thicker. After this, I think. Oh, this is perfect. That will be perfect. Sorry, I'm sniffing. My hay fever is playing up. Very windy day here. Almost forgot. You finish with a layer of cheese sauce. Make sure you cover all of the lasagna and it saves you another step no need to to cook it first absolutely I haven't cooked lasagna noodles for 30 40 years well 30 done right so we're going to let that cool down and then I will package it up just drained the pasta, or the fu fusilli. Um, you you want to undercook that because that um, is going to be recooked again. So that's only sort of half cooked. I'm going to use the same pan to fry mm -hmm. up the onions and the bacon. So I'm just going to a little bit of olive oil, like half a diced onion left. Eh? 
and I'm just going to cut up some of our home cured bacon. So for the pasta bake, I've just grabbed a bag of these wide lasagna noodles. I'll show you what they look like. Just that. So I'm going to cook those up and um, throw some of that red meat sauce through and that will be a pasta bake. Um, the um, fusilli, 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 fusilli? I've already thrown the box away. Anyway, that pasta is just about cooked. The leftover um, cheese sauce will go into that. I will might quickly just make um, do the onion and the bacon now. And then um, we're about done. That's it. Um, it's only just over an hour, so yeah. A little bit of salt to help spread out the onions. And because I'm reusing pots, a lot less fishes and also because I've been cleaning up as I go I don't have a huge tidy out. Just going to sweat those out. And we are on the home stretch. Once we divvy out some spaghetti bolognese sauce and the pasta bake then um, the rest will be in um, nacho mince. So I think we're going to have this all over and done with within two hours. So what did I say? 11 meals. 11 meals in under two hours for the freezer. Oh, this smells divine. If you haven't seen the home cured bacon video yet, I'll link it in the description. Tidy up while that's going. Tidy, tidy, tidy. Them done. Pop the pasta in here. Two sauce. And it'll pick up all that yummy flavour on the bottom of there. I wonder if the family will notice that it's wholemeal pasta. Throw a little bit of cheese into the mix. Get out of the tray. I just need to leave enough for the topping of the pasta bake as well. There we go, and that's another one done. Put a lid on this one. Once it's cooled down. Right, let's have a little look at the list. Lasagna, done. Meatloaf times two, done. Meatballs times two, done. Spag bowl is done in the red sauce. That'll be two. Nitros might be two or three. We'll have a look. A pasta bake. Pasta bake is just about done. Mac and cheese is done. Um, so we're just waiting on the pasta to finish. It's actually ready. So we will drain that, pour some of the red sauce through it, and then we will know what we've got left for the rest of them. Probably um, have even done two two bags. It's all right. Bulk that up with two, and you could bulk it up with a bit more meat. 
top off. Lock it up a little bit more. Definitely would have fit two bags in there, never mind, but that's still quite a bit. And then top it off with some cheese and we'll wait for that to cool down before we package and put it in the fridge, our uh, freezer, sorry. Get all this cheese out. I'm just going to portion out some spaghetti bolognese. We haven't touched this one, so it had about a kilo and a half in here. Um, and I, I definitely want two portions of that. And the nacho mints will get bogged out with um, the beans. Yeah, so about yeah, about that for two loads of spaghetti. And then I've got around about the same amount left. I'm going to add the nacho flavourings to it. So we want two cans of kidney beans. Just got some nacho seasoning mix. I'll also link that um, in the description. So you can see how versatile that meat sauce is and how many meals we were able to get out of the one recipe. That's two lots for Nacho Mints. So, so we're done. It's a 12.28. No, it's 12.23. So I think, did we start at 38 or 28? Anyway, um, that was in two hours. And I've just got a couple of pots to, to wash and that's it. I'd like to thank you for joining me today um, on my little freezer meal for ground beef um, meals and yeah I'm super super happy with that um, let's just check how many we ended up getting uh, we've got two spare balls so that's um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 11 meals in under 2 hours I'm super happy with that so um as I said, thanks for joining me and I will link the recipe um, for the meat sauce down below and um, and yeah, write out a, a bit of a description for you. Um, and um, I hope to see you on the next one. All right, bye.